Jake pushed you. Yeah. Yeah. You pushed Colin. Yeah. And who pushed Eric from behind? I just like fell back and I bumped in the <laughs> Don't hold them, punch them, then you can punch them. Told me, they told me, punch them. You did it, you did it, you did it. Listen to him, you punch, you tried to punch. mentioned where people just started massively jumping on others. Yeah. That's a seriously violent thing to do. Whoever's on the bottom is really at risk of getting badly hurt. It's not fun anymore. The schoolyard bully, a longtime staple of comic fiction and school day memories, isn't so amusing anymore. School violence is a concern of communities around the world, and too often a lead story on the television news. In spite of this, Annapolis East Elementary in Middleton, Nova Scotia, claims to be a more peaceful place. Principal Heather Harris and her staff are embarking on the fourth year of the school's peace initiative, which progressively deals with understanding cultural, religious, and physical differences. Do you remember where your teacher is? Okay, you wait right here. All right, now let me down. This school only opened 13 years ago, and we closed four smaller schools and opened this larger one. And so in this building, there are always 800 to 900 bodies every day. Ready for another good day, bud? And the one thing that we loved about teaching in those small schools is the family atmosphere. So we, when we opened, we all made that personal commitment that we were going to maintain that feeling. And we worked really hard at that. And so even though we're a large school, we're a big school with a big heart. Meeting the individual needs of children became the school's philosophy. Children who had traditionally been segregated were now included in all aspects of school life. Individualized programs were integrated into regular classrooms, and educational assistance became essential. When the staff decided to turn their attention to children with behavioral problems, the same approach was taken. Quite often, the bullying behavior is just a spin-off from some other need that's not being met. And it's finding out what is that need and attending to it. You lost? Up, Eddie? Yep. Eddie was in grade three and in trouble when the program began. Once labeled a bully, he now helps others. Eddie stuck up for me a lot if somebody is mean to me. If I didn't have any friends, I would be hurt. So that's why I have Eddie. He's used to swear a lot. He's changed out of that a little bit. And just like fighting, he used to play fight a lot, and he used to get in a lot of trouble for that, too. Anger builds up inside of me. I just have to take it out somehow, and next one that does something to me, I just explode on them. And then I go through the whole day, and I can just literally make them cry at the end of the day. That's how me and I could be. In grade four, ever since then, each year I'd get a little bit gooder and a little bit gooder. And this year I just knew that I had to be good because if I didn't, I know definitely I'm gonna fail this year. In the beginning, it was hardcore bullying. It was the physical violence that we found. And as the years have gone on, it's the more subtle kinds of violence. It's the verbal. And if, if we didn't take it upon ourselves to respond to every single one of them and take them as seriously as a punch in the face, then it was never going to stop. And that's when we realized we had to live by that definition. Violence is any mean word, look, sign, or act that hurts a person's body, feelings, or things. 
No one is entitled to use violence, and it won't be tolerated in our school. So those are up as visual reminders everywhere. And that was the first thing we had done four years ago. And if they had been caught breaching any one of these acts of violence, a report was written. And this shows how high the number of violence reports we had at the very beginning, the very first week, way back in November of 96. And we had 128 violence reports in that first week. Then every year since then, we've cut our average number of reports per week in half until last, last year we averaged anywhere between 15 and 20 reports a week. What we were learning as classroom teachers and as educators, that we were spending an hour a day either settling the fights and the disputes or we could spend an hour a day doing education. How many people here have experienced bullying before? Was somebody bullying you or somebody really making you feel uncomfortable? How many here have been a bully before? Nobody wants to admit to it. You know, I, I'll tell you, there have been times when I have been a bully before when I was younger. And it's probably, you know, sometimes you do it because you want to, you want to, you purposely want to make somebody feel bad or you want to have power or something like that. I bet, yeah, I bet if we really were honest, some of us could honestly say there are times when we have been bullies. And you know, that's a real key here. We decided last year um, to make sure school-wide we're going to do a respect and protect theme um, in every classroom. What are some of the triggers that cause anger? What are some of the triggers that cause um, people want to want to have power? And, and, and look at all the different aspects of why people behave the way they do. Has anybody ever been in a situation where they felt like they had no control, that they had lost control? One time my brother was really making me mad, so I just started going wild and started hitting him. <laughs> and you felt like you were out of control then? Yeah. What was controlling you then? Anger. Your anger, yeah. Travis. My sister, she always gets on my nerves and stuff, but I don't really want to get, like, mm, fight with her because she'll go tell mom and then I'll get in deep trouble from her. <laughs> okay. Um, um, when some Catherine. people get me really mad, I end up trying to kick them, but my friends are pulling me away so I don't hurt them. Oh. Uh, it gets me so mad at my friends sometimes, I just feel like kicking them. When we finish these lessons, I'm hoping that you'll be the one who's in control. It's not anger that's controlling me, it's not my frustration, it's not my brother who's controlling me, and it's not my friends, it's... Me. Why is it we spent a lot of time talking about point of views, uh, understanding differences, acceptance of others. Including them in your conversations. Including them. Not laughing at them. We do a rights and responsibility activity where the kids will talk about what rights they'd like to have as students. And then once they decide what rights they'd like to have, okay, in order to have these rights, what is your responsibility? Not yelling at each other. Not yelling at each other. Good. These are all the life skills that they need to know probably much more important than anything academic that we'll ever teach them. We are down to about 20 repeat offenders, out of, out of almost 700 kids. A lot of the kids are one or two time offenders. What did you do that was wrong, Shep? I told Michael that um, Katie Bruce the on saying bald Becky, and then he started calling her bald. So what's wrong with saying that information to other people? <laughs> that if you get scared and hurt people's other feelings. Yeah, and do you have a right to hurt anybody's feelings? How are you going to remember? Because of this talk. Are you going to remember because of this talk? I hope so. Do you feel better, Becky? You sure? Mm -hmm. It's a cool haircut. I'm not sure I'll have one, but it's cool. You okay? All right. For the majority of children, ongoing education and firm reminders usually curb most bully behaviors.